Jesus explains. The monster of avarice. You remain demon fodder until in Satan's plan to stop Trump. November 15, 2016. Words from Jesus through Sister Claire. Spoken by Jackie. Claire began. The Lord bless you, dear heart dwellers. Well, I have a confession to make. I want to say first of all that there is so much hope for you who feel the most unworthy of the Lord. I say that because when you see who I truly am with my real character flaws, you know you can do better. So I fell by focusing on outer beauty rather than the inner beauty of my relationship with Jesus. And in those situations I always lose. I gave in to the temptation to spend time and energy on a piece of clothing, and any time I focus on externals, I feed that internal monster of acquisition, which never has enough. I feed it with whatever it wants, and it demands more. It takes up my heart, my thoughts, my time, and I lose that time with Jesus. What sweetness could have been mine if only he was in my heart? rather than all these other things covering him up. So I came into prayer very discouraged, because Jesus had convicted me of avarice and pride again. Claire, do not give up this fight. We can conquer this and translate your heart totally over to me. You are not without hope, as you imagine. Lord, it seems like a struggle that will never end. Like the dream I had about the panther, I never knew if he was totally dead or not, because he kept coming up, even after a long period of time. It is a lifelong challenge. The sooner you conquer it, the freer you will be. But Lord, I love beauty and beautiful things. And that's your downfall. Forgive me, Lord, but didn't you make beauty for us to enjoy? Yes, but when it distracts you away from me, it becomes an idol. To you, looking for the right color of a piece of clothing is more exciting than coming to heaven with me. And that's the honest truth, or you would come more often. Oh, wow, he's really right. How can I change that, Lord? Don't let your flesh win. Rechannel that desire into heavenly things. Ask to experience and feel heavenly things and continue choosing heaven over the carnal things. But the beauty of this earth reminds me of heavenly things. But the things of this earth are so short-lived. Recognize it right there and then, when you see it. Give it its proper place, but keep going back to what is truly important. Most people stop to explore the fragrances of their newfound flowers, but that's not for you. You need to trust that someday you will be enjoying that fragrance but until then, deny yourself and refocus on those who are perishing and what you can do to stop them or call them into my bosom. It's not hopeless as you think. You make progress, then you fall behind. There is so much more I want to give you, but you keep clinging to worthless things. Lord, that's what seems so hopeless to me. I'm trying to be careful, very careful, and I still miss the mark. I still fall. And that is humiliating, isn't it? It is consummately discouraging. True, I sometimes want something in this physical world that I know is not a necessity, but a want. 
And sometimes I allow you those wants when it is safer and you will not abuse the privilege and go overboard. But most of the time your wants are frivolous in the light of saving souls, in the light of what will not pale in eternity. Oh, I wish I could completely circumcise your desire nature, your need for external beauty. It doesn't seem fair, Lord. You made colors and beauty for us to respond in gladness. But our gloomy time on this earth is sometimes, many times, cheered by the sight of these things. And I suppose I transfer too much value to those things when life gets dark and hard. How do I reconcile this? If you have a fancy for earthly consolations, you will draw those to yourself. But if you have a taste only for heavenly ones, you will cease desiring the beautiful things of the earth, because they do not satisfy. You know they fade, Claire. They grow old, rip, are eaten by the moth, are lost or damaged in the process of everyday living. Yes, you're right, Lord, but when that happens, I want to replace them. Yet there are times when my will overcomes their seducing powers. There are many times I see you struggle, my dearest. I'm not about to abandon you or stop the work I have given you to do. I just need more cognizant effort on your part. Like a butterfly, when you see a cute little child running in the field with a butterfly net, run for your life, or should I say fly, and flee for your life, turn your eyes away from her seductive beauty, or you will be caught and pinned in her collection. That's all I'm asking of you, Claire. Flee for your life, because a soldier must never get entangled in civilian affairs. Do not think you are alone in your struggles. You see, even generals in the army are attracted to beauty, sent by the enemy to ensnare them. I have many more gifts for you, but you must empty your heart of these things. I want you to see yourself differently. You are not that 17-year-old in Chicago coming from a materialistic background. You have been translated into the Kingdom of Light, and you no longer belong to that world, nor does it belong to you. All things are yours through me, but all things are not profitable. Your fascination with beauty and order are not profitable. They are dangerous. So what do I do? When you see that net coming, fly, my little butterfly, flee for your life. The connection you've made with the object is already dangerous. I know I can do that sometimes, but all the time, especially when the enemy targets me and I have no confidence that I will escape. When I'm tired or feeling depressed, then it seems like I've lost my self-control. That is why I'm telling you, I will of course give you a way out, but you can't be bullheaded and ignore me. Having a determined mind is good as long as it is determined to be true to me. But when you are determined to get your own way, that is when you fall. Oh, I know, all this sounds so familiar, a lifelong struggle, and yet you have had victories. Let's have more and more victories and less and less defeats. Do you want it to be said of you by the citizens of heaven? She honors him with her mouth, but her heart is far from him. Oh Lord, that crushes me, just to think of it. And yet in some areas it is true. You must overcome those. You must. 
but you are not doing this alone, I'm with you. I will uphold you in this battle as long as your will is firmly committed to me. Lord, this is what I want. I want to be free, no longer in bondage to these things, yet I can feel the corruption in my heart tugging at me. Jesus, I'm weak, but you can make me stronger. I see the resolve, even though it is a bit shaky, it is there. Reach out and take my hand and allow me to navigate you around these deadly reefs. And to all of you, my dear brides, I say, everything good on earth is to be enjoyed, but not all things are profitable for your souls. It is when people become decadent, wanting more, more luxuries and beauty, that they fall away from me into sin. Some of you have been raised in such an environment, but have no attachment to it. You can live with make-do clothing and equipment. But those of you who have grown accustomed to nice things and have scorn and contempt for second best, if you do not master your lust for things, it will be your undoing. How many times do you want to circle that mountain in the desert? This is the season Satan uses to draw you away from me and into the shopping malls and internet stores. These demons that have been loosed are powerful and know your weaknesses. They know your buttons, your likes and your dislikes, and they know just how to push them. Every time you give in to the impulse, you grow weaker and they grow stronger in their influence and control over you. There is only so much room in your hearts, my people. You can fill it with beautiful things from the world or fill it with me. Ultimately, this decision is yours and I will inspire and aid you in avoiding these traps if you will be diligent in calling for my help when you are most tempted. Just give me a few moments, call for help and give me 10 minutes and see if I don't root the enemy from tempting you. You will find out that if you give in to this, when you bring home whatever you bought, you will begin to feel compunction and the object will seem almost worthless to you. Or you will grow bored with it and say to yourself, this isn't what I wanted. What was such a big deal when I just had to have it? I'll answer that for you. You were torched and inflamed with a demon of lust for that item. All these attributes of the object you so desired were inflamed by this demon, so you just had to have it or something just like it. The color, the texture, its usefulness, the fragrance, the shape and size, the price, how rare it is. Everything you admire about the item is torched into you just as surely as if someone had taken a blowtorch to you, and so you wanted it. You wanted it really badly. You found all kinds of rationalizations about why you had to have it. All the while the demon is smiling and agreeing with you, while he turns up the heat until you get it. Then after you get it, you think to yourself, this is so perfect for me, I should just get one or maybe two or three more before they are all gone. Then you get home and after a few minutes or a few days, all those things you were feeling are gone. What happened? But I wanted it so badly, you ask yourself. My people, I'm revealing to you the tactics of the enemy and how your money vaporizes around this time of the year. 
I'm telling you, dear ones, the demons are so thick and so hellbent on getting their way with you, you will fight with this lust every day of your lives until you finally say no more and put your foot down. Until you value my company over anything you could ever want from this world, you will be demon fodder. It's up to you now. Forewarned is forearmed. You may think I'm exaggerating or that Claire is taking poetic license, but she's not. I'm giving it to you straight. You are in an all-out war to deprive you of the sweet intimacy of my company, to cause such guilt in you that you can't face me because you know you overspend or to cause you to have to give up precious time in order to get a job to pay for what you bought. And then you are so preoccupied with the pleasures and things of this world that you lose your taste for intimacy with me in favor of your new toys. I'm not condemning you for getting what you absolutely need. I'm warning you of the trap that lies before you every Christmas season. And I'm telling you, this country is hanging on your prayers. The establishment is planning outrageous false flags to keep Donald Trump from office. And if you indulge your Christmas shopping, you will be too busy and too tired to pray. Please, my children, don't do this to yourselves, to me or to your families. It is critical that you not allow this to happen this year. It will be a fight all the way to the White House, and you will defeat the enemy with your prayers, and I will keep you from self-indulgence if you are vigilant.